QuickBooks Online 2022 Manage Users. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file that we set up with a 30 day free trial in the Get Things Done page, which used to be called the home page. We're going to hold control down, scroll up just a bit to get to that 125%. We're looking at the users and adding users, which you can find in the cog up top. Then under the your company area, we're looking at the manage users area. So the manage users is one of those types of things that uh, is a limiting kind of factor in terms of the level of QuickBooks that you got. In other words, oftentimes if you need more people to be accessing QuickBooks and you want more functionality with the limitations that you can apply on them, which is useful for internal controls because as you grow, you're going to want certain people to have access to certain things, then you can add more users. Currently, we're in the pro plan where we have the uh, inclusion of five users and you can also add the accountant. So the accountant typically, uh, I don't believe is added in that five users. So you got five users plus the accountant that you can add. And if you go into the accounting side of things, you can invite the accountant over here, which again is quite useful because most accountants are familiar with QuickBooks. And if you work at the end of the year for taxes and things like that, it is nice to be able to provide the information or give access to the software to make the accounting and year end work as easy as possible. I'm gonna jump back on over here to the QuickBooks webpage, just to take a look at the differences in the users between the different uh, levels that they have. Remember that there's a difference between the type of, of QuickBooks desktop versus online. And then once we're in the online, those are two separate kind of softwares you can think of them as about. And then if you're in the online version, you have these different levels or tiers and different payment plans, which are in essence, the same software, but different functionality or added functionality as you go up the spectrum. So if we go into, for example, the essentials, you've got three users. If you're in the plus plan, which is their recommended plan, what we're looking at, you've got the five users. And then if you needed to level up from there as you're growing, then this is one of the things that oftentimes it needs to be added. And then you can go in here to the 25. It says here, room for entire team, create custom access to share the work safely without uh, exposing sensitive data. So you get more customizations for internal controls, which is going to be more and more useful and necessary as you get a larger and larger business within the accounting department. Invite up to 25 unique users and unlimited uh, reports only users to work together remotely. So you got the 25 users that you can have that can work in the system. And you've got the people like if you wanted to give people access to just the financial statements. So for example, if you're working with a bank or something like that, and they want the, they want the financials and they would like to draw the financials they would like to draw, but not give them access to the data within the system, then you can get, you could do that as well. And that doesn't include, or is not part of, you got unlimited reports only users. In other words, reduce errors and rework with employees working in real time inside uh, advanced. So you can take a look at some more information on that here. And so that is compared to the five users we have here. Invite your accountant to access your, your books for seamless collaboration. Give employees specific access to features and reduce errors with auto syncing and protect sensitive data with user access levels. So, so in this case, they got access levels that are kind of preset access levels, not quite as much uh, 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 specialization in the different types of internal controls that you may have with the advanced uh, users. So I'm going to go back on over again. We're of course using the plus here. So that's what we're looking at at this point. So if I go then back to the first tab, if we wanted to add a user, let's take a look at that. Now we could say add a user up top and go through the process, select your user type. Uh, this counts towards your, uh, your user limit. So this is going to count towards the user limit of five standard users or company admin. So the standard user, users, you can give them full or limited access without admin privileges. So typically you want to have like one admin usually and then add basically standard users after that. And you can then have as much basically privileges as you want to give them. Uh, within the standard user or you can have the company admin they can see and do everything this includes sending money changing passwords and adding users uh, not everyone should be an admin so if you have a partnership or something maybe you have multiple admins but i think generally you would even in that situation would want basically one admin 
one admin account, right? And then the other accounts being basically standard users, that would be a, you know, standard structure that you would expect. Otherwise, it would be kind of, it can get kind of confusing when you're trying to have issues with the, with Intuit or manage your software and things like that. It'll be more straightforward generally if you have one admin account and then the, the other users. So uh, these don't count towards your user's limit. So if you go down here and add them as reports only, that means it's not going to count towards that five user limit. They can see all reports except ones that show payroll or contact information. So again, if you're working with like investors, maybe, or if you're look, working with a bank or possibly your accountant, although you might want to add them as the accountant, then you might say, hey, look, I'll give you access to all the reports you want, right? You can generate your own reports because they might say, hey, look, if you want an investor is, is trying to invest in the company, you might give them the balance sheet and the income statement, but they might say, hey, I want the prior year balance sheet. I'd like to use to look at supporting reports. You can say, hey, look, you can look at whatever you want within the system in terms of the reports. You can change different date ranges. You can run comparative reports and so on. And you can give a lot more detail uh, to people that uh, you're interested in doing business with possibly or the bank or whoever you're doing business with with that uh, tool. And then you got time tracking, which again also doesn't uh, t tap into that five users they can add their own timesheets, which is nice, which is kind of nice if you're doing a billable area or in other words, oftentimes in a job cost system, it would be nice if they can log in and use the timesheet capability so that you can then take their time and uh, and then enter that into your invoicing process. So that could be a great tool for like a, a law firm or CPA firm, for example. Let's go to let's say we're going to go to the standard here, which is generally what you would end up doing. And then how much access do you want this user to have? So now the question is, do you want them to have access to everything? This is where really the internal controls come into play, which you have a little bit more control in with these five users, but you have more control if you leveled up to the more advanced users. So you could say, I want them to have access to everything. So they're not admin, but they do have access to everything, including payroll if you check this off. Obviously, if you uncheck this, then the payroll is going to be removed. What does that include? All access this user can see and do everything with customers and sales vendors. Uh, they can also add, edit, and delete employees, add, edit, and delete payroll transactions, change preferences, view activity log, create, edit, and uh, delete budgets, add, edit, and delete accounts, make deposits and transfer funds, reconcile accounts and make journal entries, view all reports, turn on sales tax for the company, change the set up for existing sales tax information, make sales tax adjustments and file sales tax returns, set up multi, uh, multiple multi-currency, perform home currency adjustments and forward receipts and bills from email. So then you could say, okay, what if I want to set them up with none? No accounting features. This user can't use any of the accounting features, but can still let them manage certain things and submit their own timesheets. So, you know, that, that's an option, but it's probably not one you would use if you're having the timesheets because you'd use the timesheet option. But in any case, limited, which is more likely to be the case here, where you have the, the again, a pretty limited set of, it's a limited, limited area <laughs> in terms of the internal controls. But normally people might be working in the customer's area or the vendor's area. So they might be, a, you know, a sales cycle or accounts receivable specialist or a payment cycle or accounts payable specialist. So in the customer's area, if you give them access just to that, they have access to customers and sales. So the user can enter estimates, invoices, sales receipts, credit memos and refunds, enter charges and credits, uh, create and delete statements, receive payments from customers. So notice that these two are, are two things. You can create the invoice and you know record the receipt of the payment. Uh, which sometimes you might, again, it depends on your internal controls, but you have more advanced internal controls that might basically separate duties uh, in the advanced settings. So in any case, uh, fill out time timesheets for anyone, uh, add, edit, and delete customers, products and services, view customer registers and reports, view tax rates and agency settings, use and adjust sales tax and sales transactions and general journal entries, including manual override, calculate tax amounts, add, edit, and delete currencies, and edit uh, exchange rates. So they can't do these things. They can't print checks, including refunds, make bills, purchase bills, uh, bill, billable to customers, because these are on the other side of things. So add, edit, 
delete accounts and quantity on hand viewed bank registers so that's one of the that's a huge internal control because you're basically saying i'm going to keep the banking side separate which is something a lot of sole proprietors can do in order to basically still manage or be uh, you know reviewing their information keep the you know do the bank reconciliations and keep the banking thing on on your end of the activities see total income and expense amounts on home vendor and customer page uh, run tax reports or view tax history prepare and file a sales tax return and uh, set up new or change existing tax agencies set up multiple currencies perform home currency adjustments and then we've got the vendor items so if we look at the vendor, you could do both of them but let's just say just vendors so enter bills from the customer so this would be the payable side of things so they were working primarily on the payable side enter bills from customers enter cash and credit card purchases pay bills write checks and view uh, check detail reports print checks ex uh, accept refunds add edit and delete vendor products and services view vendor and ap reports view tax rates and agency settings use and adjust sales tax in purchase card and banking transactions include manually overriding calculated sales tax amounts run tax reports or view tax history prepare or file a sales tax return or record sales tax payments add edit and delete currencies edit exchange rates what they cannot do add edit and delete accounts and quantity on hand view bank registers so again you're keeping that banking stuff kind of on on your end as the admin possibly set up new tax agencies or change tax settings set up multiple currencies perform home uh, currency adjustments see total income and expense amounts on home vendor or customer pages so let's go back up top i'm going to say all here for our for our user and i'll say next and then we have next select user settings do you want this user to add edit and remove users typically no right we'll do that on the admin level i would think generally do you want this user to edit company info and again probably not because the company info might be done on the admin level do you want this user to manage subscriptions again most likely the defaults would be correct here and no for most people and so uh, we'll invite them uh, to create quickbooks account so now we can send the email to them and so let's just check that out so i'm going to say here that the email is going to be this and i'm going to say this is for for i'm going to say and brown and then say save it and save it done and so now if i go back to this i'm going to go back into my my users let's go back up top and do it again manage users hold down control scroll down a bit now it says two here but i don't have the other one because i think they have to accept they have to accept the invitation so now ann has accepted and we've got our two users down here with uh, ann brown in place and if we wanted to edit the user then of course we can view that well we can view the user activity here and see the activity for the uh, date changed user event and history and then we can look at the drop down for the user uh this month and so forth with a date and all events versus uh budget uh, data exchange and so on so you can kind of track what is going on and you can also go back in then to the user by going to the cog drop down let's go back then to the manage user here and we can hit the editing button if we so choose and get the information for them and we can change basically the settings up top standard user admin reports only if we so choose and then adjust the settings that we've taken a look at in uh just just a second ago so let's close that back out and then let's go back then to the home page which is also known as get things done page 